Wakulla Springs, located near Tallahassee in the Florida Panhandle, is one of the world's largest freshwater springs. Its water is connected to the longest and deepest known submerged freshwater cave system in the world, and its spring shed includes major portions of Tallahassee. Over the past several decades, there has been an increased level of nitrates observed in the springs. The long-term success of efforts to restore Wakulla Springs depends on a reduction of nutrient loading to the aquifer. A recent USGS study demonstrated a hydraulic link between Wakulla Springs and the effluent spray field of the city's largest wastewater treatment plant, the Thomas P. Smith Water Reclamation Facility. After treatment to secondary effluent standards, all of the wastewater at the plant is pumped to the Southeast Farm Spray Field, where it is used for agricultural irrigation. In order to protect the natural water quality in Wakulla Springs for future generations, the City of Tallahassee has committed to upgrading its wastewater facilities to advance wastewater treatment standards. The City's new operating permit requires a series of interim reductions in effluent total nitrogen, culminating in a final total nitrogen limit of 3 mg per liter. Construction of facility upgrades to achieve these advanced wastewater treatment standards had to be carefully sequenced to ensure that the city could continue to meet existing secondary affluent standards as well as interim nitrogen reduction limits throughout the project. Hazen and Sawyer employed biowind process modeling that resulted in the sequencing of construction of the AWT improvements to meet interim nitrogen reduction milestones and also provided a full year of relief in what was an aggressive construction schedule. The project is being constructed in three main work packages by MWH constructors under a construction management at risk contract. Work package one included construction of a headworks facility, three primary clarifiers, a primary effluent pump station, deep bed denitrification filters, a methanol storage feed facility, chlorine contact basins, and a sodium hypochlorite storage and feed facility. The deep bed denitrification filters were placed into service in August of 2011 and have allowed the city to meet interim total nitrogen limits during construction of biological nutrient removal upgrades to the aeration basins. Supplemental carbon, in the form of methanol, is added upstream of the filters to promote the growth of denitrifying bacteria within the filter media. New primary treatment facilities were also brought online in this first phase to reduce organic loadings to the secondary treatment process. Process modeling had demonstrated that without primary treatment, solids loadings would compromise secondary effluent quality when basins and clarifiers were taken offline for advanced wastewater treatment upgrades. Work Package 2 upgraded the city's sludge storage, thickening, anaerobic digestion, dewatering, and drying facilities. A gravity thickener was constructed to thicken primary sludge prior to digestion. Secondary sludge thickening was converted from a dissolved air flotation process to gravity belt thickening. Two new anaerobic digesters were constructed and two existing digesters are being upgraded to improve volatile solids reduction. The existing screw presses were replaced with a new centrifuge dewatering facility to produce a drier cake feed to the new thermal sludge drying facility. Dried, pelletized solids are stored in product silos and sold to fertilizer distributors for use by golf courses and farms. Once deep bed denitrification filters, primary treatment, and related solids handling facilities were placed online, construction began on BNR upgrades to the existing secondary treatment process. The existing secondary treatment process consisted of three treatment trains. Each treatment train had a pair of aeration basins and a pair of secondary clarifiers. And this presented three problems that we needed to address during design. One was that each treatment train had a different sludge characteristic. Another was that if you took a secondary clarifier out, you had to take out the adjacent aeration basin. A third issue was four of the secondary clarifiers were significantly undersized as compared to the adjacent aeration basins. The Hazen and Sawyer design created a single sludge for our facility. And this really helped out with simplifying the process control and process monitoring. To create this single sludge secondary process, our design implemented a common mixed liquor distribution channel, a new common return sludge manifold, a new primary effluent and return sludge distribution box, and new distribution piping to each of the six upgraded BNR basins. 
The single sledge approach simplifies operation and eliminated the need for an additional secondary clarifier and RAS pump station, saving the city $2 million in capital costs. Each aeration basin is being upgraded for biological nitrogen removal. The design also provides for the flexibility to operate each basin in either a four-stage configuration or a five-stage configuration for biological phosphorus removal. Reinforced concrete baffle walls are being retrofitted in each basin to create the anaerobic, anoxic, and aerated zones required for biological nutrient removal. High-efficiency vertical mixers are being installed in anaerobic and anoxic zones. Fine bubble membrane diffusers have been installed in each of the aerated zones. New single-stage high-efficiency blowers, nutrient analyzers, and state-of-the-art automated process air controls will serve to optimize aeration energy demands. With only two of the six aeration basins upgraded for biological nutrient reduction, coupled with deep bed filter denitrification and methanol addition, we have been below two milligrams per liter of total nitrogen since October 2012, a full 14 months ahead of the permit schedule. Upgrades to basins three and four are now underway. As the remaining basin upgrades are completed, the city will rely less on the denitrification filters and further reduce operational costs from purchased methanol. The city retained Hazen and Sawyer to provide both design and construction management services. During the design phase, Hazen and Sawyer firm and staff consistently demonstrated professionalism, expertise, flexibility, responsiveness, and most importantly, teamwork in the design and construction of the Advanced Wastewater Treatment Project. Hazen and Sawyer recommended equipment that resulted in a savings of over $15 million to the city. Upon completion of the project, the T.P. Smith Water Reclamation Facility will stand as an important example of modern wastewater treatment and water resource recovery. The robust treatment process will meet the city's treatment goals and better protect the environment. The innovative design will save the city millions in operating costs and offer the operational flexibility to make strategic use of energy and other resources. Hazen & Sawyer is proud to have provided design, construction oversight, and operational support services to the City of Tallahassee on this model project, and congratulates the city on its environmental leadership.